Here's Heel Toe Automotive with another informative video for you. Today we're going to be talking about torsion bars. Torsion bars go into 1984 through 87 Honda Civics and CRXs and also in um, 1986 to 89 Integras. So torsion bars are how the car is supported in the front end. Some people uh, have heard about torsion bars being in here and then they get all weirded out and then they want to just do a coilover conversion by putting a spring over there. We usually kind of frown on that just because these uh, upper mounts in here were never really designed to support the weight of the car. They're really just strut mounts. And there's nothing wrong with torsion bars. They lower the center of gravity of the car by bringing that weight down. It's taking unsprung weight and moving it onto the uh, chassis and more inboard. So uh, the torsion bar setup on these cars is really pretty awesome. So torsion bar is basically a metal rod and it works because when you twist it, it wants to spring back. So a coil spring kind of works the same way, just when you compress it, the twisting is happening on a much smaller level over a much longer um, coil. But uh, in a torsion bar, it's straight and you're basically getting this twisting action and that's what causes the springing effect. You can see that they're splined on either end. In this particular car, it's important to note that uh, the splines on one end are larger than the other. There's like one extra tooth and that makes the diameter on the back bigger than the one in the front. So they'll only go into these cars one way. And uh, the way they mount in the car is uh, through this arm, which is called the torsion arm, and this tube, which is called the torsion tube. Now the torsion tube uh, fits over the back of the subframe like so, and sits in place. There's splines back here, and splines here, and the bar goes in between. So um, because this bar is mounted to the subframe, the suspension moving is going to twist this end of the bar and that's how you get the springing motion. A lot of people with these cars realize that the torsion bars allow the car to be adjusted from the factory um, for height. And they do that with this adjusting nut right here. So this nut allows, as you spin it up, is going to twist the torsion tube and raise the car. And as you thread it down, it's going to lower the car by unwinding it or basically unloading it. Uh, it takes preload out of the bar and that's what lowers the car. It's pretty common to see sometimes CRXs or Civics running around with this nut hanging all the way off like this. And in uh, extreme cases, you know, sort of like cutting your springs, you can take out this washer and really get the uh, torsion tube twisted down. But basically this is how the height of the car is adjusted in the front. And that doesn't matter if you put factory torsion bars or aftermarket ones or whatever. So this is basically how the torsion bar is set up. The size of the bar is going to dictate uh, how much effect it has. So obviously like this bar, which is the factory torsion bar, is gonna be easier to twist than this 27 millimeter Medieval Pro one. So it's pretty common for people who are doing suspension upgrades to put larger torsion bars in because it's gonna give them more wheel rate in the front, basically a heavier spring rate. These are commonly available in 24 and 27 millimeter diameters. Also, uh, there are a lot of 29 and 31 millimeter bars floating around out there. 31 is the biggest you can go. Uh, it has the highest wheel rate. There is a wheel rate chart on heeltoauto.com that helps you sort out the wheel rate or the effective spring rate is gonna be for any particular size. Also, depending on what car you have, they're gonna maybe be different lengths. So this is a CRX, and you can identify that here. SB2 is for a CRX. Uh, these torsion bars are a little over 24 and a half inches long. Uh, some Civics actually have shorter bars. They're shorter by about a half inch or so. Integras are longer, maybe by like an extra two inches. So what you'll find is you are gonna have varying lengths and the difference on the car is in the length of this torsion tube. This length is gonna be longer or shorter depending on what kind of car it is. Now, it's certainly possible if you have an Integra, for example, to pull off your Integra torsion arm and buy one for a CRX 
junkyard or something like that and slide it on there. And then you can use CRX torsion bars in your Integra. The only real thing that you gotta watch out for on that is that the end of the torsion bar the end of the torsion tube, there's a cap that goes on here and bolts into the chassis. So if you do put a shorter torsion tube in here, you won't have anything to bolt onto. So you'll have to maybe make some new holes just to kind of like stabilize that torsion tube there. Currently, Medieval Pro offers bars in 24 and a half inch length for use in CRXs. They can be used in Civics without any modification at all, but the bar is gonna be hanging out the back just a little bit. It's not the end of the world, you could totally do it. We're probably not gonna be making shorter ones for Civics, but it could happen. We do plan on making longer ones for an Integra though. Indexing. You'll see on the torsion bars that there is a spline missing. Here you see it's actually marked with paint, but there's actually a spline missing on either end. The reason for that is because those voided areas fit into spots in the car where there's actually, you can see in this torsion arm here, there's a spline that's actually filled in somewhere. Yeah, it looks like it's right, looks like it's right here on this inboard side. Um, that is functioning as a keyway. So the way these are designed to work is the torsion bar slides in through the back the keyway lines up with the splines in the front. You get those engaged, and as you continue to pull the bar in, it's gonna engage in the back as well. And there's another keyway clocked in a different orientation in the back. So basically, from the factory, the torsion bar is only supposed to be able to go in keyed to those specific areas. Now that means that the front to rear spline orientation is preset from the factory. What dictates that rotation is the angle of this arm, which is dictated by the height of your strut tube. The factory strut tubes are a little bit longer than these Medieval Pro ones. So you'd actually imagine from the factory setup, you'd have a little more droop, and that basically is going to move this orientation from where I have it right now. When you go to install a short stroke suspension like this Medieval Pro kit, you're gonna find that the arm has to move up a little bit in order to install this all correctly that's where re-indexing comes into play. You've probably heard that you need to re-index torsion bars in order to install this suspension kit. Well, it's pretty true that that's the best thing to do because otherwise you're gonna have this adjusting nut all the way down at the bottom um, and that's just not ideal. You kinda wanna have this adjusting nut be somewhere in the middle of the threads. So in order to put the short suspension in while having this torsion bar adjustment in the middle of the range, you need to re-index the bar. And what that means is, we're gonna have to remove a spline from our torsion bars so that we can slide it through the tube and have it engage properly, even though there's keyways in here. So in other words, it's keyed in one position, we need to move the bar so we have to re-key the torsion bar in a new position. 